how do you deal with issues of refugees while we still have these guns in some parts of the continent? Are we likely to meet the target of silencing the guns in 2020? Well, we set the target. I mean, targets are set to kind of push people to a particular, you know, um, time frame. And we set the targets uh, very optimistically. But uh, as we look at what is unfolding in Africa and the way that uh, we are opting all of us for peace as opposed to war, then you can see that we might meet the target of 2020. Um, and uh, we, we've been going through that and um, almost uh, patting ourselves on the back. We are on the right track. Um, and uh, the issue of refugees is a matter that is of great concern, which is why we chose it as a theme for today. It's not just internal refugees, it is also refugees that leave the African continent to go abroad. And as you know, they experience a great deal of hardship. And uh, in most cases, there is almost a right-wing response to them coming into, into Europe. And I think that Africa is uh, rich enough. We have all the resources. If only we can pull together, stick to our deadline on what to do and what to do at what time. As you know, we have signed the Africa Free Trade Agreement and um, so many countries have now deposited. And uh, what is left now is for countries to take it through the parliamentary processes and have it uh, accepted by the parliament and uh, uh, stamped as law in each country. Then we're beginning the process of making sure that Africa can use the resources it has instead of exporting them out, out to the outside world or Europe, wherever it is, we can use them internally. It would also force us to build the necessary infrastructure so that we can trade with each other. Um, when we went through uh, our achievements yesterday, I thought um, most of us were quite comfortable with the space that we have. If we don't make it by 2020, it will be one or two countries. But so far, the countries that are either going to elections, we have 16 countries going to elections, all of them have pledged it will be peaceful elections. We have asked uh, them to make sure that the transition is, is equally uh, peaceful. And regions have been taking responsibility for creating peace in their own environment. We have a more peaceful Africa now than we had 10 years ago. So our, our targets seem to be at that time optimistic, but very realistic now. We will be dealing with the issue of refugees now, the internal refugees, how to deal with them and how to make sure that our own citizens accept the refugees who come in because part of the problem is when the citizens of a country don't accept refugees. So there are certain ways in which we would like to make sure that we have a common approach, a, a also a possibly a common culture so that when um, refugees come into a, into a country or any country, they understand the culture of that country and abide by the laws of that country and don't exclude themselves because their own exclusion causes a great deal of suspicion amongst uh, citizens of a country when you find uh, a place like uh, Hillbrow or completely occupied by one nationality. Our people don't like that. We would like them to mix. We would like them for as long as they are given refugee status to be part of the community, behave like part of the community, and in that way they will not be excluding themselves, nor would the, the receiving country be excluding them. The case of Europe is a very different one. Uh, we just confronted with a situation of a great deal of right-wing governments, and uh, they have no sympathy for what is happening in our continent. Uh, that we cannot uh, solve, but we can solve our own economic problems and we'll be able to absorb our own refugees. Minister, you spoke about regions uh, making sure that there's prosperity but also there's peace. The SADC region, the DRC matter, are you optimistic that after the elections everything will run smooth? There are people who are still in exile. You had uh, the SADC meeting uh, uh, two days ago. Yes. You know, if you take things one step at a time, you will realize that what happened in the DRC, despite all the problems associated with it, was, um, was a real uh, first. The DRC people um, do tend to take to the streets. There is a great deal of violence accompanying any election. The 2011-2016 elections were particularly violent in the DRC, uh, and I'm sure you were there to cover them. Uh, but this time there has been no violence. It's an, it has been a very uh, safe environment uh, for the elections and post the elections. 
and we're counting that as a success for us. We've committed ourselves to making sure that we're going to assist uh, both the elected um, uh, president of, um, uh, of the DRC together with the people of the DRC craft an, 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 an arrangement where everybody feels that they are included and everybody feels that uh, the success that has been achieved is they can own that success. But the first prize for us was peace. There is peace in the, in the DRC and that we must emphasize. It's a first and we are very, we're very glad it happened that way and we hope it will be uh, a carry through for all other elections in Africa. And Zimbabwe? No, 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 I'm not. I'm not pushing for a government of national unity. I don't think anybody has any right over the people of the DRC. They have a constitutional right to decide who runs the DRC and they do have a constitution that determines how the cabinet is chosen and uh, they have promised that they will abide by that. Ours is to support them in whatever they do and support them in a way that actually makes sure that we can retain the peace that there is there. There were a lot of people who were unhappy, but we are hoping that with time when they see that there is a peaceful arrangement in the DRC, they'll be forced to go back and look forward to a, a much more settled uh, environment. Uh, we, there's there very little that we can do about the elections. Uh, the Constitutional Court has decreed and in terms of the constitution of the DRC, that is the ultimate voice to declare on the elections. We abide by that. We respect that. This Zimbabwe question, did you touch on Zimbabwe? We haven't touched on Zimbabwe in plenary, but as you know, we have regions. We had a very, very lengthy discussion as SADC about the issues that, uh, that are causing problems in Zimbabwe. And we got a very good briefing from President Mnangagwa with no holds barred. And he was very honest with us about what is happening in Zimbabwe. Our job is to assist uh, Zimbabwe as much as we can to get it back to normality. It's, on, it's only in our interest, it's in the interest of the region. Minister, South Africa will take over the chair of uh, SADC. Uh, no, no, not SADC, AU next year. In October presidency. You were supposed to say congratulations before you ask the question. I thought you were going to say congratulations for, the, for being elected into the chair for 2020. Minister, you are going to be in the presidency of uh, UN in October, and then it's AU. We are not in the presidency of the UN. We are in the Security Council of the, U, of the UN. And uh, we are doing very well there. We're very proud of our input into the UN Security Council. Uh, we, are going to, we are the first vice president right now of uh, the AU. And uh, next year we are the chair of the AU. Uh, we're delighted that this honor has been given to South Africa. And we intend to make sure that uh, we carry our job uh, with the kind of uh, responsibility that is put on our shoulders. A great deal is expected of South Africa. We are one of the I mean, most stable countries, most stable economies, the biggest, one of the biggest countries. And we want to make sure that we can give our best to the continent. We were honored when we were uh, um, chosen as the chair and uh, we go home feeling very good about it. That was SADC decision. That was a SADC decision. What happens is the AU is, is organized around a, a regional, re, regional basis and the chairship is a rotational matter. And SADC met um, about two days ago and uh, all concurred that South Africa would be the one that would be put, put forward as the chair of SADC, I mean, of, of, of the AU. Uh, that is a SADC decision because it is a Southern African uh, turn now to, tear the, to take the chairship of uh, the AU. Stage four rotation.